we're starting a new module in the course. So we're moving into the machine learning uh, part of the course where our main objective is to make accurate predictions. And uh, this first lecture is gonna to talk to you about how we evaluate machine learning models where our primary objective is prediction. So let's, um, let's go back to what we've already covered. And so, you know, we've had a, a training data set and we, uh, we, we estimate some Ys from some Xs using this data. And then the key thing is that we've been evaluating the model using the same data that we use to estimate it. So, you know, our measures basically start with re the residual sums of squares. Uh, so that's just the objective function value. Now, that's the thing that we minimize when we choose the, uh, the parameters of our, of our model, you know, say our, our, our uh, linear regression or, um, you know, logistic regression also. Is, um, we evaluate the model using the data um, that, uh, that we use to find the parameters. Um, there were other measures that we had, and um, I, I'd like to just point out that these other measures uh, have one-to-one -one relationships with the subjective function value. So sometimes we compute the mean squared error where we divide by n. And to me, um, there's nothing really new about this. It's kind of like going from inches to centimeters. You know, you multiply by a constant. Well, here we're multiplying by a constant. And so, so the point I'm trying to make is that mean squared error um, is, is, is basically, you know, very similar to RSS. There, there's nothing different about it. It suffers from the same issues that RSS suffers from. Um, uh, you could say uh, R squared uh, has the same problem, you know, so we have one minus uh, this objective function value over a constant. The total sums of squares, if you remember, was a constant. So, so what is this, this problem again? Well, if we, um, if we evaluate our model on the data that we use to estimate it, our, um, our assessment of the, the errors will often be what's called optimistic. Okay, so uh, the reason it's optimistic is because we've, we've chosen these parameters, we've fine-tuned it, if you will, to do well on this particular data set. There's a very famous um, phrase that's, that's often used to describe this as capitalizing on chance. So we, um, you know, we, we tune our parameters, um, and w what happens is we end up capturing the, the noise in addition to the signal, Whereas all we want to do is capture the signal part. We don't, we don't want to capture the noise. So to illustrate this, I put together a very small example that I think makes the point very clearly. So uh, here's my example. Let's say that um, the, in truth, now, now in reality, we never get to know the truth, but since this is a mathematical example, we get to know the truth. So in, in reality, my Y values are just my X values plus a little bit of error. And how much error? Well, the errors are gonna be normal zero, one. So uh, notice the, uh, the variance of these errors. So the true you know, variance is one. Remember the variance tells us the typical square deviation from the line. All right, so 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 the so the true variance is one. Now, I've um, uh, you know set my seed so you can reproduce this if you want, and I've I've generated eight uniform uh, uh, values. I multiply it by ten to have a range of of uh, zero to ten. And so you can see um, uh, the x values. Then I, I generate some y's and I add eight normal zero, one variables to them, and you get the scatter plot. Now consider three models. The first one is I'm going to just simply regress y and x. Um, this model, I'm gonna say, is slightly overparameterized in that it's gonna also have an intercept by default. And, um, uh, you know, I, I didn't really have an intercept up here. So uh, the intercept could make me slightly vulnerable to uh, overfitting, but, um, you know, we'll, we'll see. Uh, the second model is, um, is, is I, you know, let's say I didn't know that this was a linear relationship. And, um, you know, maybe I thought I'd try a quadratic term. So I have both a linear and a quadratic term you can see the fitted models off to the right. So the, 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 uh, the, the linear model is the line, the, uh, the red model is the quadratic, 
And then um, I decided to go a little bit crazy here and give you a six degree polynomial. So the poly function in R gives you a six degree polynomial with an intercept. And so when you do this, you get um, a curve that, that uh, wiggles a lot. All right, well, let's evaluate these models the way, we, um, the way we've been model, uh, evaluating models, you know, which is, you know, RSS or the mean squared error. So I'm gonna take Y minus the predicted value using model one. So model one is the black one. And uh, we're gonna square those errors and compute the mean. So this is literally the, the typical squared deviation from the, uh, you know, from, from, the, from, from the mean. And notice the, um, uh, the, the mean squared error is a little bit over one. Now, um, remember the true variance is one, so we're, we're pretty close to the true variance. Maybe the fact that it's over is because I, um, you know, I gave it an intercept when I shouldn't have. Well, um, let's go look at our red line. So traditionally, we would just go, um, you know, compute mean squared error of the red line. How do we do? Well, this is looking much, much better, right? Typical deviation from the mean is, is uh, basically cut in half. It goes down to about 0.49. So using the traditional measures, we'd say, ooh, that, that red line looks really good. Well, how, how about that six degree polynomial? So, uh, oh my goodness, things got much better. Uh, RMSE is, is cut to about 0.23. And just using these traditional measures, we would say, well, that purple or blue um, uh, curve is great. Now, um, of course, that's the, uh, you know, we wouldn't want to use that because I, I think it's pretty clear that purple curve is capturing the noise and the signal. It's not, it's not just capturing the signal, but in a high dimension, we wouldn't be able to visualize it the way we get to see it here, and, and we might be overfitting and, and not know it. All right, so what do we do? And I, I like to say that there's two broad approaches um, to get what's, uh, what's often referred to as an honest estimate of the air. So these estimates are not honest because you know, we, we evaluate the model with the same data that we used to, to, to uh, estimate it. So the two approaches uh, can be called what I uh, the penalized approach and the out of sample approach. So let's start with the penalized approach. Penalized approaches um, add a add a penalty term that um, accounts for how you know complicated the model is, and so the 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 the, the complexity of the model is usually characterized by the number of uh, parameters in it, so let's just call that P. And um, you know, I'm, I'm going to mention two popular penalized estimates, but there's many more. So one of the oldest ones is called adjusted R squared. It's uh, R squared sub A, and this is just one minus RSS over something over TSS over something. Now, <clears throat> if I hadn't included this minus P right here. Notice it'd be RSS over one minus uh, n minus one and divided by TSS over n minus one. The n minus ones would cancel out and would get our old friend, you know, the basic R squared. But when I start, when I uh, uh, add this um, uh, negative P in here, um, that's going to, um, you know, penalize more complex models. So for example, the six degree polynomial has, uh, has, has you know, six uh, parameters whereas the quadratic only has two and the, um, in addition to the intercept that is, while the line only has one. All right, so with, with a sample size of only eight, that, uh, that penalty should be pretty substantial. The uh, other measure that's uh, often used is AIC, and the penalty there is simply two times the number of parameters. So we just take, take whatever the deviance is and add two times the number of parameters. So the implication here is if I add one additional parameter, uh, deviance has to go down by more than two for me to want to do that. All right, well, let's go see how our uh, wonderful uh, penalized measures have done here. So um, you can get adjusted R squared. You, you've seen it a million times in uh, the summary output, but um, you know, summary returns a list. So if you say, you know, summary dollar adjusted dot r dot squared, you get the adjusted r squared values. You want to choose the largest one. So that uh, fit one is the linear model. 
only has an adjusted R squared of 0.82. If you, um, if you go to the red quadratic model, you're going to see adjusted R squared shoots up to 0 0.9. So I'm, I'm really uh, you know, excited about that. Um, the six degree model, you're going to see, well, things got a little bit worse. The, the penalty is pretty strict on that. Um, you want to choose the largest one. So we would go with the red model, even though uh, it's not the right one. Okay, so the point I'm trying to make here is this penalized measure gets it wrong. How about AIC? Well, with AIC, the, ru the rule is uh, you want the smallest one possible. So the black model has a 29, the red model has a 25-ish, and uh, you know the, uh, the, the blue model is at 27. So we would choose the red model again, and we see that AIC gets it wrong. All right, so um, let me just say the, the, you know, the, 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 the main benefit of the penalized measure um, is that it's computationally very easy to get these measures. So we're going to be using these in model selection because it's easy. <laughs> um, they're not perfect as we can see here, but, um, but uh, we're, we're going to see these out of sample approaches are, are much more difficult. Okay, so what is, what is this other approach, this out of sample? So, so machine learners like to talk about um, test and training sets. And the, 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 the analogy comes from, uh, say, students with, with a test. So let's say I um, uh, give you a, <clears throat> a practice midterm, and um, you, it has a bunch of problems on there, and you can, get, you can practice and get good by using that practice midterm. So you learn the material. A uh, machine learner would call that the training data set. You're being trained to do statistics from that training set. Now, um, I, if I went in and gave you the same uh, midterm, uh, practice midterm, as the real exam, um, that would not be a good exam because, you know, you could have just memorized the answers. Now, a machine learner would say if you just memorize the answers, you've overlearned. Um, so uh, instead, what I should do is give you some new problems from the same universe that was covered on that um, practice midterm, and uh, the machine learners would call this a test set. Uh, Leo Breiman used a phrase that I really like, um, and it's you conjure up a test set. So let's go do that with my problem here. What I've done is I have generated uh, 10,000 additional problems. Um, so imagine I give you eight problems to uh, practice on, then I give you 10,000 problems on the exam. That's, that's basically what's happening here. So I generate 10,000 um, uh, new data points from the exact same distribution. Uh, notice I generate corresponding y values with the same normal 0, 1 uh, errors to them. All right, now let's go predict, you know, use the model I estimated. This is the black model. Let's, let's apply that, that black model to this big test set of 10,000 cases and find the mean. And so you're going to see the mean squared error is a, is a little bit over one, and uh, you know remember the true error is one. So this is this is uh, pretty much right on. How does model two do? So model two is the uh, red parabola model, the quadratic, and you're going to see it does substantially worse. So while AIC and um, and R adjusted R squared get get it wrong by saying that red model's uh, pretty good. Um, the test set clearly identifies this as a as, as a as a poor model. Okay, well, what about that uh, that 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 six degree polynomial that wiggled all over the place? Uh, and the answer is it's a total disaster. So if I gave um, you know a test set, um, this would be you know predict very poorly. So the errors would be very large. All right. So um, uh, you know, let's. Um, let me um, modify the example now. So um, another issue that we're going to find, so, so what I've just illustrated to you is where you have um, a choice of how flexible your model should be. You know, so, so uh, should it be a very rigid model like a line or should I let it be a little bit curvy like a parabola or should I let it be really curvy like a six degree polynomial? Another question we're going to have is, um, which variables should be in the model. So to simulate this question, I'm going to create what are called decoy predictors. 
And so these decoy predictors are unrelated to the Y, and they're just noise. So here we go, X2 is just give me eight values, X3 is give me eight random values. They've not entered into the um, you know, computation of Y at all, it's just, it's just noise, I'm adding noise to the system. Better do the same thing for our test set. All right, so um, let's go fit a regression. And now, um, remember, I'm simulating this situation where I'm not smart enough to know that X2 and X3 don't belong in the model. And, uh, you know, I'm hoping my, my model will be smart enough to just give those zero coefficients. And, of course, that's not going to happen. It's going to capitalize on chance. All right, so I've just estimated model four. Um, how do I do in my test set? The answer is um, uh, not, sorry, this is the training set. On the, uh, uh, on the training set, you're going to see it um, uh, looks like I do really well. When I apply it to the test set, uh, the test set reveals that um, this model has capitalized on chance and is overfitting. How does AIC do? Well, AIC comes in at 30. If we compare that with what we had before, if it, let's not look at the red or the blue model, um, you're going to see um, AIC actually gets this one right, uh, and it would prefer the, the, the one-parameter uh, linear model over this, this model with the two decoys. What about adjusted R squared? Well, 0.819 versus what we had before is 0.82, so the 0.82 is bigger. Adjusted R squared also gets it right. All right, so let, let me kind of summarize the takeaways on this. So when we build machine learning models, we're going to have to make some decisions. So the one sort of decision will be around flexibility. You know, so I've, I've illustrated that with the degree of the polynomial, but we're going to see other, um, other ways to make models flexible coming up. Another question that we have is, which variables should I include? Should I, which one should I drop? Which one should I keep? Um, we should not be using these, these metrics that are based on the, the uh, training sample because they are optimistic, they capitalize on chance. So what do, I, what do I do instead? Well, I got two options, basically. I can either use a penalized approach, because it's computationally very easy, um, or I can do something out of sample, and that's, um, that's, uh, that's the better approach, but uh, computationally a bit more difficult. 